This is Rise Together News. Whenever I approach a new problem, I start with what I already know now, either from my education or from reading books, and add to it what I don't know but theorize by applying logic and common sense. I got my first Bible when I was four years old. It was an illustrated adult version of the King James Bible. And you could say I learned to read by matching the illustrations with the text. The Genesis creation story always posed a problem for me because it produces more questions than answers. For example, I always wondered, where did the dust come from that was used to create Adam? So as I got older, I looked at stories from all over the world and finally found creation narratives that made a little more sense to me in the Nagamati texts. One is called The Secret Book of John, and another one is called On the Origin of the World. When I first read them, I thought they were a little out there and considered them to be metaphorical and not at all literal. But over time, I began to wonder, what would happen if I did take them literally? Now, a few posts ago, I suggested that we all consider the creation stories as myths in order to glean deeper truths that our defense mechanisms might otherwise cancel out. But what happened to me as I compared the creation stories from across the world is that I started realizing that they may actually describe literal reality. Because it seems all the creation stories form pieces of a puzzle that when you put them together, you get a vivid picture of our universe. And while the Bible doesn't thoroughly explain the nature of our existence, it does present what I consider to be a very important aspect of it, just as important as all the other creation literature. And as a whole, the creation stories present a much different reality than the ones we're taught in church and religious schools. Scientists have recently discovered that our universe is made of a form of plasma that when combined with electrical charges can form its own dust out of nothing and actually self-organize into inorganic living matter and naturally evolve. As plasma cools, it's subject to phase transition. In other words, it can become water. And this explains how it is that the primary substance of the universe is water. So if I were to develop my own creation narrative, I might phrase it this way. Ready? Here we go. Amidst the always, since the beginning never was due to the absence of time, luminous thought created a story that came together so suddenly brilliantly and boldly that it automatically inspired a sequel in the genre of a horror story complete with monsters, goblins, and gods emerging from the deep dark sea. And that sequel inspired another story to form a trilogy we now know as the creation. All right, that's all for now. What follows are links to studies carried out by researchers exploring the nature of plasma. Our look at the scriptures will make much more sense to you if you look into some of these articles. I'm Cindy K. Courier. See you next time.